Hey there guys, I thought today I'd make a video about the kinds of things that I keep stashed in the trunk of my off-road lawn tractor. So here's the off-road Murray lawn mower you guys have seen in many of my videos, and as you know, I relocated the battery up front between your legs, which gave me room in the back, where the battery used to be, to build me some trunk space. So you can see I've got a bunch of stuff packed in here, there's actually a few major components, and this is all kind of strategically placed. Um, so much so that actually having things packed in this way keeps everything locked into place, which is really cool. So we'll go over what's in here um, piece by piece, and I will show you why I have all these things in here. We'll start off here with my tow rope first. Um, this is a normal, regular nylon braid rope. Um, very durable, has some stretch to it, which is really nice when you're trying to pull on something. You can see I tied a loop end at either end and put a shackle in there because I hate hooks because hooks come unhooked. So if I get to tow somebody for a distance or somebody's got to tow me, I just want to hook it up and forget about it and not have to keep rehooking things or deal with that. This rope is approximately 10 feet in length, um, not too long, not too short. Um, this is personal preference, obviously you can have a longer or shorter rope if you wish. Next up is this just spare cord of oil, Shell Rotella. Um, I've recommended this in the past. This is good stuff, especially for Briggs motors. Um, just keeping a little extra in here just in case something happens. I've also got this little folding saw. This is also a just in case type thing. Um, I can fold it out. I think it's about 14 inches long. Um, cuts pretty good, cuts pretty quickly. It's compact, it fits in the trunk, so I threw it in there. And now on to the biggie. Now what this thing basically is, is just an ammo container, and they were used by the military for a very long time. In fact, they're probably still used by the military today. But you can pick these decommissioned ones up at like Army Navy stores, surplus stores. Um, you can even find them online. I've got mine marked on the rear so I know which way it goes in because it does matter. But these are waterproof and airtight, so everything that you put in will stay dry and rust free. You could run this thing over with your lawnmower, you could throw it into a river and pick it up three days later, and everything inside would be totally and perfectly fine. On the inside you can see everything is very well packed and organized. Um, everything is contained in its own little container. As you can see there's a couple containers and lots of things placed in there. There's still a lot of room. Um, and over here you can see the rubber gasket that runs around the top of the lid. These things are difficult to open because they are so airtight and they clamp shut with this clamp right here. You can hear that thing suck down. It's, uh, it's pretty intense. These are pretty badass. But let's crack this baby open and I'm going to show you all the contents inside. All right, so you can see I've got pretty much everything laid out here. You might not be able to see everything, but I'll go through things piece by piece and explain to you why I have them here. And I'll try to make it quick. I don't want to bore you guys. So first things first, I should probably stress that it's really important to have a good first aid kit. Just for no other reason other than uh, you're probably going to get hurt at some point or another. And you can see in my first aid kit, which is sealed at either end, I've got rolled up gauze, there's a bunch of assortment of band-aids, I've even got some butterfly sutures in there, a few q-tips, and even a small pony lighter, I think that's what they call them, um, you know, just in case. You can carry matches if you want, but I feel like you have better luck with a lighter. Matches get wet and don't work. If a lighter gets wet, you can dry it out. Um, but yeah, that's in there for emergencies only. Also kind of in the same realm as the first aid kit is tissues and paper towels and I've also got inside here a plastic shopping bag um, or you could use a trash bag or something and the reason I've got this in here is because plastic is a great way of waterproofing something temporarily or if something happens or catches fire you could seriously use this as a bucket, a mobile bucket for water I mean if you've got nothing else you've got something so the paper towels and tissues are basically just exactly that um, I've got a handful of each in here uh, mostly for anything, um, checking oil or wiping your ass, because when you gotta go, you gotta go, and you might as well have some paper on hand. Also something a little more random and also very multi-purpose is this sheet of, I think it's uh, three or five mil plastic. This is just regular plastic. Um, I just cut off a four foot by four foot section and folded it up, because I figured if nothing else, if I've got to lay underneath my freaking lawnmower, I'd rather be laying on a piece of plastic than on the mud. Um, also, if you get caught in the rain, you don't have a raincoat, you know, you get a piece of plastic you can hide under. So yeah, something else that's very multi-purpose, lightweight, might as well have it. You might not ever need it, but when you do need it, you'll be glad you had it. 
This is kind of just a little tube of spare parts. You can see I've got an extra spark plug in there and I made sure to put a small piece of vacuum hose onto the end of my spark plug so I don't screw up my gap because that would be kind of pointless to put in a spark plug that was incorrectly gapped. So be sure to do that if you carry an extra plug. I've also got about 12 feet of this 14 gauge wire and this is also very multi-purpose. Um, not only can you rewire your entire lawnmower with probably this single piece of wire, but I mean you could wire things up if uh, something was falling off you could use this to tie something on you could also use it to uh, you know if, if a hot muffler was falling off you could wrap this around it and the coating would melt off but the wire would stay so very multi-purpose to have a bunch of wire on hand so I got that in there this is a pull starter and this is my emergency pull start you guys have seen the video in which I created the pulley on top of a Briggs motor to be able to use something like this I highly recommend this, even though you might never ever need it. It's just one of those things where you never know if you're, <laughs> if you're even, you know, 50 feet out in the woods. Uh, it sucks when your battery's dead and you can't start your tractor. So just do yourself a favor, throw one of these on and throw one of these in the back of your trunk. It's gonna help you at some point, I guarantee it. This bolt actually locks my steering on the Murray. You can see there's a little hole here right where the steering drops through. And if you take this bolt and drop it down in, it locks the steering into a straight forward position and you can't turn the wheel or the wheels. So the advantage here and the reason I carry this bolt is basically if the Murray ends up dead for some reason and somebody has to tow this a very long distance, I can throw this bolt right down through the steering, lock the steering straight, sit back and relax, and the Murray won't swerve all over the trail as somebody's towing me away. Again, not something I'll probably ever need, but I'll be glad I had if I need it. This is just a silly little something. Um, this is actually a standard wooden metal hacksaw blade, and it's attached to this little handle, which actually kind of looks like a gun, and I just sort of like it because it's cool, it's compact. Um, you can cut through metal and wood and rubber and anything, really. So uh, you never know when you might need to slice off a piece of metal really quick or cut something, you know, you never know. Um, like I said, it's very compact and lightweight. I had the room, so I threw it in. This, I know it's hard to see because of the glare, but this is a float bowl gasket. And this is the gasket that goes onto the bottom of the float bowl where your main jet would screw in. Um, so basically what I've got here is the makings of a small rebuild for a carburetor. And this kind of coincides with this other little guy here. And what this is, is actually for cleaning out torch jets, uh, for cutting torches, oxyacetylene, things of that nature. And the reason I've got it is because it's also very good for cleaning out Briggs and Stratton jets. It's got a gnarled edge, you probably can't really tell. But you just take whatever size fits, run it up through your main jet, and basically clean the thing out. It works really good. Um, I've pretty much consistently used this over the past couple of years and it works great. Um, you can pick these up at hardware stores or supply welding supply stores um, for you know anywhere from two to five dollars. So just grab one of these, throw it in. Someday you'll be glad you did. Make sure you got your gasket kit to go with it. You could essentially field strip and clean your carburetor with these two things. So good to have these. Also got a humongous bundle of zip ties here. Um, there's probably a dozen in this bunch. Um, I can't imagine I'd need any more than that, but they're all zip tied together. Um, nice and tidy, but these things have a million and one uses. I don't need to tell you guys, um, so just keep a bunch of these with you. You never know when you need them. Uh, just don't use them on hot parts because they'll melt through. You know, that's what the wire right there is for. Um, but good to have these on hand. Piece of electrical tape because you never know when you need tape, and electrical tape is really good because it's stretchy, works on pretty much everything. So yeah, i got about a half a roll of that in here. Moving on to some of the tools, you can see I've just got a 3 8 ratchet, Craftsman. Um, nothing fancy. The small short handle is all I wanted. I've also got a socket index and these are all standard sizes I think from 3 8 all the way up to 7 8 um, So this will pretty much fit every chassis bolt, most of the engine bolts, probably none of the transmission bolts because that's foreign and metric. But um, you got pretty much everything you need right here. You can do spark plugs, uh, like I said, chassis bolts, everything else. So it's good to get yourself a little socket index. Very small and compact. I get the deep sockets because they work on everything. Shallow and, uh, you know, long threaded nut ends. So, good to have the deep sockets. 
Now instead of carrying a bunch of shallow sockets, and you never know when you might need to have two wrenches on a single nut to undo something, I got these offset wrenches, and you can see what I mean by offset, and all of them are dual sized, um, so they've got different sizes on each end, so very, uh, it's a nice compact way of carrying every single size. Um, this has pretty much every single size that socket index has, so another good thing to have with you. Now this is pretty interesting. Um, instead of carrying five or six screwdrivers, I carry one screwdriver and a bunch of bits. And the bits here I have are Phillips, three flatheads, two Torx bits, which these actually work on the top screen of a Briggs & Stratton engine. Um, and I've got the smaller nut driver sizes. And these are the smaller sizes that actually the socket index and my wrenches don't have. So I've got pretty much every size bolt, standard size bolt, covered down to about a quarter of an inch. The reason I've got these Torx bits here is because I can remove the top screen of a Briggs & Stratton motor. And why would I want to do that, you ask? Well, let's say I'm riding with somebody and their engine dies and they have no way of starting it back up. As I mentioned before, I have this custom pull start. I can easily swap the top of my custom pull start pulley onto another motor with just these things right here. Most of this stuff that I have here isn't necessarily just for me, but if I'm with other people and other people need things, need to be fixed, um, are dead in the water, I can pretty much help anyone out. And to me that's pretty much what it's all about because you never know when you're going to be out in the woods and your carburetor or your friend's carburetor is going to fail on you and you might have to clean it out real quick and I've got all the stuff right on hand to take care of something like that or say it stalls out and they can't get it started back up because their battery's dead and you don't have jumper cables you're either going to have to tow the thing out with the tow rope or if you're like me you might try to swap out that custom pull start and get them back up and running so they can drive themselves out. I just realized I forgot to mention the vice grips and the pliers. If you don't know why you should have these in the trunk of your lawnmower, then you probably shouldn't be driving an off-road lawnmower. And there you go. Everything's back in the box. You can see I've got plenty of room to spare in here. Put my hand right down in there, no problem. So I could put even more in here. So that's it today, boys. Uh, pretty simple, easy video. Not much modification, but, you know, just some stuff you might want to bring with you. A uh, bunch of ideas there. By all means, leave comments below and tell me what you think as far as uh, supplies. Do you think I left anything out? Or do you have other things that you prefer to carry that would maybe cut down on some of the weight? Leave your suggestions. Everyone can read through them. It would be a really good thing to do just because uh, it will help out pretty much everybody that's watching this. Um, something else you could do is maybe uh, make a video response of what you keep in your trunk. I'd like to see it. I'm sure other people would like to see it. Um, everyone's different, so everyone keeps different stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff that I probably didn't think about, so I'd love to see what you got. But that's pretty much it for today. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the video. Rate it up or down if you like it or hate it. I just want to know, and we will see you next time.